Hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Dave Tillmouth and I'll be hosting it today. You'll see that you have a Q&A section in your window. So please feel free to ask questions as we go along and we'll have a Q&A session at the end of the event. So to introduce Richard Gould, he's our Sales and Business Development Manager at MetLace and a qualified engineer. He's been with the company for four and a half years, joining very shortly after MetLace was created. Prior to MetLace, Richard was Commercial Manager at Castings Technology International and the University of Sheffield's Advanced Manufacturing Research Centre for their AMRC Castings Division. For the last 19 years, Richard has focused on the development, commercialisation and adoption of new, disruptive and advanced manufacturing techniques which bring about step change improvements in manufacturing processes and then use end users product performance. Richard has been instrumental in the successful implementation of new advanced manufacturing techniques in companies based in the UK and worldwide, including Rolls-Royce, GKN, McLaren Automotive, Boeing and Siemens. So now it's over to you, Richard. Thanks, thanks Dave. Thanks for that very kind uh, introduction and a very warm welcome uh, to everybody here today in the second of a series of Masterclass webinars. Uh, my name is Richard Gould. I'm the Business Development Manager here at Metlays. I'm talking to you today from our uh, innovation area in the Metlays Design and Manufacturing Facility uh, here on the Advanced Manufacturing Park in Sheffield. Uh, and today's webinar is about inline testing and inspection of components and processes in the manufacturing world. I'm also going to talk to you today about the evolution of Metlays and some of the fundamentals of our technology and, and how we came about. Uh, and then I'm going to move on to some of the con content of uh, conventional uh, inspection techniques and some of the challenges faced uh, by people uh, tr trying to inspect, inspect parts and also uh, demonstrate two Metlays, uh, innovative Metlays solutions for you today. So where did Metlays come from? Well, it was actually born out of Rolls-Royce. Uh, Rolls-Royce invented a new manufacturing technique to help them with their uh, building of fixturing and tooling in their uh, Hucknall Sheet Metal Works uh, division. And it actually delivered some really good benefits to Rolls-Royce in their manufacturing processes and in, their, and in some of their problem solving. So Rolls-Royce wanted to spin out this manufacturing team of six engineers so it could grow and diversify uh, into multiple sectors. Uh, and to cut, cut a story short, to today we've grown from six to 30 engineers in the space of a, a few years, and we're now in multiple different sectors such as aerospace, automotive, uh, medical, uh, energy, and, uh, and so on. The actual process itself uh, is it's based around Rolls-Royce's patented mechanical joining features. Um, these joining features are cut into the a laser cut into the edge of a predominantly stainless steel, two or three millimeter sheets. Uh, it's exceptionally uh, accurately cut to up to 10 to 20 microns. The technique uh, allows us to do very, very rapid production of tooling and fixturing and um, engineering solutions. We also exploit the specific properties of multiple different materials. So while most of our fixturing solutions are made of stainless steel, we also exploit the properties of materials such as titanium for its lightweight uh, nature, but also because of its springy nature. So you can see the spring in the center right of the slide here. The specific design and shape of that spring was to meet the very specific requirements of a, of a customer's issue um, on, on that day. So we are able to provide a, a, a clamping force, for example, to a very precise need. And in the, in the world of holding parts for measurement, making sure that there's no distortion uh, induced in a component is, is absolutely critical. So our ability to use titanium springs to create a very precise clamping force is, uh, is essential. The speed allows us to iterate our solutions very, very quickly. So if you imagine a, a typical tooling manufacturer may take a week or so to build an element of a tool to do a test. If you can imagine the same process at Metlays, one of our engineers may come in one day and design a, um, a, a subsystem on their CAD station, and then either within the same morning, certainly within the same day, they can actually build that subsystem and test it. And that allows for a very fast iteration of our solution, meaning that the end solution is often better than even we suspected or we believed or our customer believed was possible at the beginning of the, of the project. Uh, over the last couple of years, since we became Metlays, we have also d developed our own digital manufacturing technique, which is pretty much involved in every aspect of a Metlays solution uh, today. And I will be talking more about that uh, shortly. 
So the actual mechanical fixings you can see here. So we have the twist dowel, which is essentially a, a, a T-section uh, cut into the side of the, the, the stainless steel, protrudes through a perpendicular uh, sheet, and then the end, the top end is twisted over. I have a short video to show you of this uh, after this slide. Uh, the slot rivet that you can see top right, this is a very rigid and permanent fixing, whereby we actually deform a, um, the, the fixing itself to create a rivet feature. Uh, we have the screw lock that you can see bottom left. The, the, the small cutout uh, image that you can see there is where we've actually laser cut the thread in the perpendicular adjoining uh, plate there to create a, a, a joining uh, feature that you can uh, take apart many times. And then finally on this slide, we have the countersunk uh, version, which, produ which produces a flush, uh, effectively a flush screw lock uh, uh, fixing, which is very useful if you wanted to create a base or if you want to have some, uh, a flush uh, surface for maybe some linear actuation to happen on the, uh, on the top. The accuracy that we can achieve here uh, is uh, around 10 microns. And if you imagine that a blood cell is around eight microns, that gives you an, a, an impression of how accurate this actually is. And the other absolutely key point here is that there's no welding involved whatsoever in, the, uh, in our assembly process, uh, which would then induce uh, the, the, the warping and twisting. Very short video that I'm going to show on the next will loop uh, and it's showing one of our engineers. It will loop. There we go. So it's looping, showing one of our engineers actually building uh, an automotive uh, chassis welding fixture. Uh, you can see how they are just basically twisting over the the twist dowel, as we call it. And these these the elements to this fixture were were, were very likely cut that morning, and this whole fixture would have been built in the uh, in the space of a few hours. These, these images here show a, uh, a demonstrate an application for our slot rivet. This is a, a machining fixture for the Boeing Sheffield machining facility uh, across the road, uh, based across the road from us. And the, the key point that you can see from the, uh, the, the blowout image there is that the, this is not a solid lump of material. The slot rivets that you can see protruding through on the bottom right image, they're actually supporting a structure underneath. And this is where our design engineers have used an op optimal, optimized uh, topological design technique to only put material where material is needed to uh, withstand a force. The resultant is that the fixture uh, produced in this technique, this fixture that you can see here was around 12 kilos. The equivalent fixture used over in America was about 120 kilos. So it's around a tenth of the weight of a typical fixture providing the same, the same performance. So the, the digital technology, which is, I'm, I'm going to be going into that in uh, quite a bit more detail later on, but effectively what, what we have with our mechanical technology is something that is rapid and accurate. And what we did not want to do is slow this down and make our, make our mechanical solution less, less powerful by overlaying it with a, a, a slower to implement digital technology. So we've effectively created our own technology uh, our own digital um, capability here that you can see uh, that I will be going into more detail uh, shortly. So how do we actually apply the technologies, this, this, this process? Well, it's in three, in three ways. And I'm going to work up the slide here. So customized solutions. This is where we may get a phone call from a customer who knows our capability and the flexibility of the process and ask us just to come and solve a problem. You know, you have, and in their manufacturing facility, or it could be a, a maintenance and service uh, tool that they wish to be provided. The second one, a rapid tooling and development. This may be where we are working with a client to fit out a new manufacturing facility, or where our engineers would go into an existing production facility and assess from a consultative engineering point of view, a production process and look to use then Metlay solutions to improve that process, whether it be productivity or reducing defects, or creating some, uh, uh, you know, some better solutions. And finally, digital manufacturing solutions. This is, this is where predominantly a, a large proportion of our solution is standardized and then will be tweaked to suit our client's needs. And the, the example that I'm going to show you towards the end of the webinar today is a, uh, a great uh, example of the digital manufacturing solutions that we've developed. So onto the content of the actual webinar today, we're going to talk about inline and out of process dimensional checking, how we can identify faults quicker, uh, and the added benefit of the collection of usable digital data. 
I'm also going to talk about some, some of the confe conventional, excuse me, conventional fixturing and uh, optimised metlay solutions and some of the challenges that, uh, that are faced using conventional fixtures for the dimension of inspection of components and also how uh, metlay has created some bespoke digital solutions. Before I start that, I would like to ask the audience a question. So this is, this is, in, this is going to be interesting for us because we've been talking to our customers uh, extensively about what the challenges they face. But uh, Dave, I believe you're going to be, oh, you have, you've put up the poll here. So I'm going to give about 30 seconds or so just for the audience to answer. What is the biggest challenge you face with dimensional inspection uh, within your business? Uh, don't worry if you're not responsible for a, a manufacturing facility or you're not sure, just take a, take a guess. But we've given some options here of equipment bottleneck, uh, long cycle times, skills, and equipment and process accuracy. As I say, we've had a, a significant level of discussions with our customers and clients. Uh, so we will find it very interesting to understand uh, what, the, uh, what, what, it, what, what it means to you in your businesses uh, to uh, solve some of, these, some of these issues. I'll just give you a few moments to answer that. Ah, okay, so that's, that's quite a widespread. That's very interesting. That's quite a widespread. I have to say long cycle times is quite an interesting one because quite often that doesn't come up. Skills always comes up and equipment and process capability uh, is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a, very, it's a very common one, but quite often we find that uh, companies have over equipment that is actually more capable than is required. Okay, that's very interesting. Thank you very much for, for taking part in that. So just to look at some of the challenges faced when, when measuring and doing dimensional inspection of components. Obviously, the key, key uh, element of this is to hold your component uh, in, a firm, in a firm way. There are various different techniques we can do this, such as you can see two different options on here, uh, additive layer manufacture or 3D printed, a very, very quick process, but it can suffer from some lower accuracies unless you use some of the more expensive um, metallic powder, uh, sintering and, and machining. And if you're using the plastic ones, you can get some location point, uh, can wear and reduce the accuracy. If you are using the plastic ones as well, we found that people have, have, have talked of compatibility issues with cutting fluids, especially when you're machining, uh, sorry, uh, measuring machined components. The, the system that you can see on the, uh, on the bottom of the slide, this is a system that I've used myself uh, many years ago, and it's a, a modular tooling system. They, have a higher, they do have a higher initial cost. They, they do require reconfiguring uh, every time you want to uh, use them, and there is a certain level of expertise right required to set these uh, fixtures effectively. And quite often, they're not suitable for every application that you, that you may require. And sometimes the fact that they are bulky can minimize the amount of access that you have to be able to get in to do a, uh, a measurement. So, so what options have we got from a MetLay's point of view to solve some of these issues? So the, the fixture that you can see here, the, the main driving parameter was to produce a, a fixture with allowed maximum access for measurement. And the design engineer, the MetLay design engineer, uh, took particular attention to the center of gravity of this component to ensure that the minimum amount of clamping was required. In fact, this fixture will hold this part without the clamp being closed over. The clamp's there just merely to provide extra stability. Something we've not mentioned so far today is that uh, the, the capability to provide um, white light uh, scanning uh, reference frames that follow complex contours of components, which removes the need to put the, um, the, the white dot labels onto the components, which is an extremely laborious job, and also means that there's limited amounts of data that can be collected. That is, MetLaser has developed a number of fixtures that actually hold uh, dial gauges in position and allow an operator to manipulate a component into various positions to take a, a reading. And that is only possible due to the accuracy of the MetLaser fixture. But as you can see there, a relatively low cost solution can be used to measure, uh, in this case, a, a turbine blade for aerospace. And then the, the image that you can see here is of a, uh, a a laser, it's a laser inspection fixture for a titanium leading edge of a composite fan blade. Now, critically, what was, uh, what's happening here is that the, the fixture is actually holding the component in a predetermined datumed position to around plus or minus 0 0.02 of a millimeter. So you can take that part out and reposition it back in to that sort of tolerance. So 
So that means that the fixture actually becomes part of your checking procedure, meaning that we only needed one laser to fire into one position on the back. You can see the laser is the is the dark box in the uh, middle, just behind the um, the leading edge, that, that could enable this to become a go no go gauge for an inline process check for this for this component. And then the last two examples, these are again something that a conventional fixture. Would, would, would unlikely do, and that's actually create the design form of a uh, less rigid component. So the example that you can see top right of the screen, this was to actually hold an exhaust component right around or just over one millimeter in, dia in one meter in diameter, um, manufactured from thin uh, sheet material. So it's, it basically sags under its own weight when placed on a bench. So you have to create a rounded, um, a, a rounded um, position and the fixture that we created that you can see there creates that to a circularity of 0.1 of a millimeter on that 1.1 meter diameter. We also know that that fixture cost about a tenth of the incumbent uh, rounding fixture that we replaced. The bottom right fixture that you can see there is, is holding a engine seal ring that had to be measured to a flatness of 50 microns and again this was aerospace so all the measurement capability uh, required to deliver that accuracy has to be 10 times that level of accuracy and the fixture that you can see there actually does hold that engine seal ring to five microns uh, flatness so all these all these solutions provide uh, and met the some of the challenges that our customers were were talking to us about in terms of accuracy long-term repeatability lightweight fixtures fast very fast in design and make we can produce a solution that's suited to complex parts uh, lower cost than traditional tooling, and critically, that datum location due to the accuracy of the Metlay's assembly construction technique. These these fixtures are actually used uh, generally used in the out of process product verification technique, and that that significant that's often um, troubled with bottlenecks, predominantly due to the slow measurement speed of uh, a piece of equipment such as a CMM. Or possibly the operator, an operator intense process such as uh, laser scanning, or even manip uh, manipulation analysis of data created through scanning, such as photogrammetry. And also, you ha these processes obviously have to remove the component from the production process, creating a non-value added process. And quite often, as I said, from our our surveys that we've done with with customers, we found that their their measurement equipment is actually far are over specified that they actually need and if something's better than you need it often means that you've paid more than you need to pay for that piece of equipment so inline process product verif verification typical sensor costs uh, can range from anywhere between 500 and 6000 pounds and these costs often force designers to use spent their sensors very sparingly however quite often you know, tens hundreds if not thousands of features may need to be measured so this, this, this critical cost factor can actually drive people back to that uh, out of process um, inspection using a, uh, a CMM or a scanning arm. So what, what might the ideal technology look like? So and this was done through a survey of our, of our customers. And these are the answers that came back to us. Measure with the speed of in process inspection, but using any type of sensor to align the requirements to, to ensure that you can use a low cost, maybe even smartphone type sensor, up to expensive industrial sensors where needed. Something that was easy to integrate large number of sensors into a fixture, and that's from a control and a spatial uh, point of view to be able to uh, array as many sensors in as required. Plug, plug and go. So programming PLCs was not something that people like to do a great deal of. So having something that could be basically plug and blow, plug and go with no programming or know how needed to use uh, the technology. This also is a very powerful part of the, our process because it means our mechanical engineers can create a digital solution without having the need to be a uh, you know, mechatronics or cybernetics engineer. And then lastly, web enabled to be so we can uh, future proof our solutions to enable machine learning. So these were the parameters that we set out to meet when developing our, our own digital technology, uh, I can introduce to you uh, Met Elements now. So what, what we've managed to achieve here is to, is to create a fixture, so a mechanical fixture using a, a Metlase um, 
uh, mechanically joined fixture that can hold a high density mesh of lower cost or fit for purpose sensors within an industrial environment. Uh, they are unlimitedly uh, scalable through, through their hot swappable and, and plug and play sensing techniques, always connected via a web based platform. And this is made possible because we've developed our own, basically our own controller uh, for each sensor. So every single sensor that we have within our systems has its own control system. And that's what creates the ability to daisy chain them on, and create this hot swappable, swappable plug and play system. The example that you can see here is a, uh, a demonstrator, the Metlase demonstrator. In the bridge, the, the, the archway that you can see, um, so, uh, within those two red rectangles in the structure of that archway are two uh, low cost infrared sensors. The third sensor is actually behind the sample plate that you can see the ML logo on positioned underneath the archway. And then the final element is the button that you can see on the front. So this system is a four, four element system. And then finally, you've got the web dashboard. The short video that I'll show next uh, on this slide is effectively showing this uh, system, uh, is demonstrating this system. So my colleague is actually going to basically set up this, uh, set up the elements uh, in, in, it, well, within the demonstration here. So we're actually plugging in the sensors. See the uh, white list on the top left hand screen of the laptop on there gradually populate as it uh, uh, picks up the fact that there are uh, elements being plugged into it. And now my colleague is going to uh, place underneath the archway there a good part. So this is this fixture would be on the production line. The operator would push the button, the sensors would operate, and the operator would get a green light telling them that that part was compliant. And then visually this part is almost identical, but we've actually put a defect in there to know that our uh, demonstrator would pick it up as a bad part. But crucially, all that data is going to a web-based platform. So when a defective part was was uh, was found, then the, the operator has the ability to identify this as a manufacturing engineer, or even alerts can be set up in the software to demonstrate to that to the manufacturing team that they have an issue. This is the system in um, in a production in uh, industrial environment. This is for an automotive composite application measuring preforms. So this fixture gets placed on top of a preform uh, composite uh, element that is uh, well, just before it's about to go into the uh, the resin injection molding uh, tooling. So this is determined that uh, over 120 uh, on 120 points. This, this component is uh, is compliant, and it does that in a matter of seconds. The final demonstration I'm going to show you here is a project that we did with our sister company, uh, Caltech Unipart Limited, KUL Limited, down in, uh, in in Coventry. This company produces many hundreds of thousands of fuel tanks for Jaguar Land Rover and Mini uh, in the UK. Um, the, the exam question posed to Metlays was, "Can you help speed up our inspection process?" Uh, you can see this video here that's uh, just on a loop. Uh, the the manual process taking it's a fairly labour intensive process, and it's currently taking between 45 minutes and one and a half hours. There's a couple of key points that I want to highlight from this video. Uh, the the operator there you can see is using a pen and paper to record the data, which makes it very unusable. Also, there's no actual physical measurement being taken. These plungers are just dropping down. To the surface of the tank, and if they if they uh, in, are in a green band, they're good. If they're in a red band, they're bad. So it's purely giving each feature a go, no go um, uh, result. So moving on to the Metlay solution, we actually created a digital uh, clamshell similar construction using the Metlay's uh, joining technique, uh, where we embedded 49 different uh, sensors. Into the uh, into the structure of the fixture, and we took the process from a well, around 1.5 hours down to four seconds, and crucially, actually capturing this, capturing the data and taking it into a into a cloud for a, uh, for process improvement. The video that we can see here is of this this, uh, this fixture in operation. So the, the operator is placing the tank into position. And it's going to be it's going to be positioned in a, a precise datum 
uh, place using the, the base of the structure of the fixture, but also the clamshell lid. Then the operator will press the button and those 49 points will be scanned within those few seconds. Absolutely crucial. That gives the operator the go no go that their process is compliant in a very short space of time. But very importantly, that, those 49 points of data can be used because they, go, they now go off into the web interface and become usable data to do process improvement. If you imagine the scenario that maybe, I don't know, sensor, point, sensor 20 measures 0.2 of a millimeter positive on day one, still within the tolerances of this specific, specific component. Maybe on day two, that's drifted to 0.4 of a millimeter. Still compliant component being produced in, within a potentially a, a band of a few millimeters. But if that trend continues, we can actually set alerts in the web-based uh, um, software that would alert the manufacturing team that there was an issue and that their process was actually drifting. And that's actually in, that's in, in, in place now. The next stage on from that is to actually connect the data from this fixture directly into the blow molding machine to potentially understand the process enough that it can control itself and uh, not produce a defective part but it's constantly using a closed, closed loop to, uh, to improve it. So, in, in summary, um, MetLase, bespoke digitized dimensional inspection gauges are a cost-effective way to rapidly inspect components. And the fact that they are so cost-effective, it often means that there's no need to take them offline into an inspection department, as it can occur so fast and cost-effectively, it can happen online. And the, if I were to say the biggest takeaway today of this webinar, for the, for the audience will be the fact that this data is usable data collected and has a huge value to your business to enable a step change improvement in, uh, in your process control by using that data from your dimensional inspection uh, process. And I'd like to thank you very much for listening today and also open up for any questions. Well, thank you for that, Richard. Um, as per usual with your presentations, I'm always fascinated even though I work with you day in, day out, and there's always something new to be learned. Um, the, the the tank automotive jig that you showed us. How does it take to um, to to build one of those to create and build it, your customer? So the, those fixtures. I mean, once we've designed the main the, the main structure of that uh, fixture to actually build one, will probably take anywhere between one and two weeks. There's no long lead time items, and most of the capability required to to um, to produce that is within our own. Uh, it, it's within the MetLase facilities. So we don't have any subcontractor uh, contracting times or any, any other processes. We're in, 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 in charge of our own destiny, so to speak. Indeed. And, and could that be built into a manufacturing process so it sort of fed back the data directly into the manufacturing process to make in line yes. with the Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this, this fixture here is a demonstrator. The, the next stage of this program, this fixture will actually be literally in the production process line. Uh, the, 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 um, the demonstrator that you saw there was obviously it was still in a, an inspection department. The, the one we're working on now will be in line, and that data will be fed straight into the blow molding machine to keep it uh, to keep their, the process compliant. You, you said as well there were 49 sensors on that, um, on that device, and you also talked about the cost of them earlier. That, that sounds like there's an awful lot of expensive sensors in there. Is that is that right? Well, actually, because the, the blow molding process. It's the, the accuracies required are um, fairly, fairly loose, certainly from the Met Laser's heritage, his aerospace. But so, so, so to us, they were relatively loose. We were talking a few millimeters. So we, we identified sensors that um, were significantly lower than the sensors we were talking about uh, uh, earlier in our, in, our, um, in our presentation, you know, often a tenth of the cost. And it's, it's the fact that we've been able to implement a, the, a sensor that's a fit for purpose that's meant that it's kind of opened the door for inline process, inline inspection, whereas previously companies would have had to have uh, the company would have had to use a, you know, they, to, to improve the manual process. The only option would have been to go down a, an automated CNM or a scan arm. Well, well, and I suppose inline is going to save an awful lot of money and avoided wasteful manufacturing as well, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a huge amount. You can imagine the amount of scrap that would be made in that one and a half hours uh, of measurement time because of the, these blow molding facilities they don't stop when a part goes off to be measured. Uh, yeah. They they continually run, and a a tank is produced every forty seconds. Wow. You've, got a, you've got one and a half hours divided by forty seconds worth of scrap. 
And it's not just the plastic in the tank, is it? It's all the sensors no. and all the, other yeah. components built into it. Wow, that's amazing. Well, we've had, yeah, no other, no. we've had no other questions in from the audience, um, but I would say to to the audience members that we'll be sending out a form um, later on uh, tomorrow, together with a link to the recording of the video. So you can ask us direct questions uh, later on and watch the video on demand um, uh, if you should require. So thank you very much indeed for everyone to attending. And uh, that is the end of the webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dave.